Shalom Lekulam and welcome to our study for our preparation for the holiday of Pesach, Passover. Uh, this uh, lesson it's going to be concentrated mostly not on tr the traditions of the things that we do during Pesach and all that. It's going to be concentrated mostly in the hidden meaning of Pesach and also in the practices that we do during during this uh, holiday, specifically during the Seder, and how this practice actually can become a meditation for us to connect with the upper light. So we're going to be concentrating in the inner meaning of Pesach, the secrets behind each object and symbolism that we have in the and on the table during the night of Pesach we're going to be concentrating also in the intentions and, and the kavanot that we need to have during each of those steps and also those steps of course you know it's going to be the practice what do we do during that time so if you are um this class is going to be um kind of like long more than an hour so make sure you have a pencil pen paper and if you can have a Haggadah with you uh, and make sure the Haggadah that is a Haggadah that you can write on it so you can make notes in the Haggadah so you can use the Haggadah with the notes whenever you are performing the Seder of Pesach so you can actually as you are doing the the, the steps, the 15 steps of, of the Pesach Seder, you can, you know, meditate on them. So make sure you have, you know, a Haggadah. Um, this is a Haggadah that I made uh, for my own family. It's uh, basically homemade. We printed uh, like 10 of them. So this is the one we use. So we personalized this Haggadah uh, for us. This is a Santiago family Passover Haggadah. And, uh, and, you can do the same thing. Uh, you can make your own Haggadah, you know, as long as it has these 15 steps and that the importance of these uh, intentions that are in it uh, are not lost. Okay, so let's start with the lesson. First thing we need to know is um, what is Pesach? So Pesach is basically divine intervention out of the normal laws of nature uh, it was done by God's mercy so what why do we say divine intervention out of the normal laws of nature we say this because uh, this is something that is not created by man or human beings this is something that is created by forces above and is out of the mercy as you guys probably know the Exodus story happened before the years of exile in Egypt were fulfilled. So the Creator needed to go to or, or send Moshe to, in, to Egypt in order to hasten that redemption. And the reason is, it is said, it is said by the Kabbalists that the people of Israel were in Egypt and they were already uh, almost partaking of the 50th gate of Tuma. and if they would have uh, basically if they would have fell on, on, on that 50th gate of Tuma, then there would be no redemption for the world in the future and uh, and and so the Creator needed to hasten, you know, the redemption to take him out of Egypt. That's the reason it needed to be done in a quick way. And it was because out of mercy, out of uh, love for, for humanity, we, uh, if, if they wouldn't have come out of Egypt, they wouldn't have another chance uh, for the world. Um, the night of Pesach, the celebration of Pesach, is not a traditional celebration only but an activation of divine energy for the rest of the year. So you're gonna hear the Kabbalists mentioning that in the month of Nisan, specifically, you know, the, 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 
the first 13 day and then the days of Pesach, you are basically planting the seed for what is to come in the next year. And remember, the month of Nisan is a, a new year. Uh, it's a spiritual new year. It's uh, how we measure basically the spiritual cycle. Uh, contrary to the Rosh Hashanah, which is a different cycle, a different new year. Um, but that's a different class uh, about the different new years that we have. Uh, also, in this holy day, we create a vessel to receive the light of redemption. So, during these holidays, what we do is, uh, during uh, the ceremony, the seder of Pesach that we celebrate, we are creating this uh, desire and intention to receive the light of the Creator and to use it for the rest of the year in a way that is not for our own um, egoistic desires, but for the sake of others. Also, Pesach marks unity achieved by Bene Israel before the Exodus. So before they needed to come out of Egypt, they needed to come together as one. They needed to realize that they needed to do uh, what the Creator wanted them to do. And for that, they needed to do it what is in, in a way that is called faith above reason. There were differences, as you can see, before they left uh, Egypt. There were differences between uh, the people of Israel and Moshe. Uh, they were like, uh, look what you're doing. He's making us work harder. So what kind of uh, help you're basically giving us? Uh, what kind of redemption is this? So there were differences uh, in that sense. But then at the end, they came together. They all celebrated the, uh, the, the, the Pesach. And they all together left the next morning in a haste. And the reason they received also the Ten Commandments is because they were underneath that mountain uh, of Sinai as one man and one heart. Uh, the holiday of Pesach is considered a Jewish holiday, but has implications for he every human being. Meaning that even though it is a holiday within the Jewish tradition, that we in the Jewish uh, uh, religion as well, it's a holiday that has to do with every single human being in the planet. Every soul living in this planet has to go through this process one way or another, of getting out of the egoistic nature and attaining the altruistic nature in a way that it is for the sake of the Creator, for the sake of heaven. Also, this holiday symbolizes transition from the egoistic desires I mentioned to a more altruistic desire. The egoistic desire symbolizing Mitzrayim, which is Egypt, and the altruistic desire, which is uh, the land of Israel, Eretz Israel. And there's a process. There is a whole process that we're gonna uh, we, we we're studying basically in the Torah about that. It is a whole process. That process from not only getting out of Egypt, but also the path that they have to go through, the levels, the basically the battles that they have to go through, the situations that they have to go through in order to achieve receiving the Torah. Then after that, they have to build a tabernacle in which then they have to have a service. And then after that, they continue walking on that desert to eventually achieve or attain the level of Eretz Israel. And, um, and that's basically what the whole Torah is all about. Well, all this, even though it's a story of a people, of a nation, is also a history of ourselves. This is something that is happening within ourselves. So when you are celebrating Pesach with your family, think about that this is happening every single day day every single time every year and this is the reason when we pray in the morning afternoon and night that we always remember the exodus from egypt because it is very important we need to get out from this egoistic nature and achieve and attain more altruistic desires and this is done only by uh uniting with all fellow human beings and loving them uh, above all differences and we're going to see how this uh, plays out uh, the holiday of Pesach 
has some elements. And these elements, we're going to cover them now. Uh, in the first one is Egypt. What is Egypt? Egypt, Mitzrayim, is a state of unfounded hatred. It's a state in which we are right now, every human being, when we're born, we're born with a certain level of egoism, that certain level of egoism start developing, and then we fall in what is called Egypt. And Egypt is only what is called egoism. Egoism meaning that I don't feel happy for what the other has, and I don't feel happy for what I have. So I'm not happy with my lot, and I'm not happy that the other one has what he or she has. And I want what they want, but then when I got what they want, I still want more, you know? And that's the state of what is called slavery. Slavery uh, of, or desires. Uh, in, 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 so it's slavery for desires, basically. So our desires are, are being enslaved by our ego. Then you have the other element, which is opposite to Egypt, and that element is called Israel. Israel is not only a land, it's a spiritual level. And the spiritual level is uh, a level in which people who attain uh, this level by uniting as one man and as one heart. So basically this level is when we unite above all differences that we have above everything that we see that make us apart because at the end when we when we really look internally what separates us is the ego the egoistic nature that we have what separates us is uh, the, the the desire to receive that we have and another element that we're gonna see even though this is uh is not mentioned uh, but it's part of the exodus is mount sinai why we're mentioning Mount Sinai because Mount Sinai represents the maximum level of unfounded, unfounded hatred in human beings. And if we stand as human beings that look at each other in different ways, that we see each other as black, white, Jewish, or not Jewish, Jewish and the nation, uh, we see each other as the right, left. Uh, if we look at ourselves as internally as one that in in reality we are one soul even though we are different in in the external um, world that we see we will see that we will receive the torah we will receive that light of correction that will correct our egoistic nature and sinai has the root in the word sina sina means hatred so it's a mountain of hatred so this mountain of hatred we were supposed to unite we're supposed to love each other above all the differences all these mountains can become our own uh, uh basically our own grave you know uh, then we have another element and these two elements uh that i'm going to mention after this are the elements basically that are fighting constantly in our lives right so we got Faro. Faro represents the ego, the egoistic nature. Specifically, you know, this egoistic nature that doesn't recognize that there that everything that we receive in life comes or is given to us by the divine providence, by 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 the the, the nature that we see that is basically representing God god giving us everything that uh, that we have doesn't recognize this and if he recognizes force a uh, force out there he recognizes the force in fragments so these forces that this egoistic nature see is called the gods of egypt okay so moshe is a desire for connection above egoistic desires moshe sees the creator, that level of motion in us, sees the creator as one unique force of the universe, creative force of the universe, while Pharaoh sees that same force but in a different way, in a fragmented way. He sees a force in different ways in the in, in, what, in what is called gods. In this case, the gods of uh, Mitzrayim, the gods of Egypt. And that's why he doesn't recognize the God that Moshe uh, is trying to present him, 
uh, because he said, "I don't know that God. He doesn't know. You know, he 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 has he has no attainment of seeing these forces as part of a bigger force that is actually all encompassing and also infinite." Okay, so it's limited nature. Pharaoh is basically uh, the Pharaoh of Egypt is basically our limited nature, and that limited nature is our egoistic desires. Now, what you're gonna see is that there are more elements in Pesach. We have the Passover Seder. The Passover Seder has 15 steps uh, or transitions, and it's a uh, transition or steps from unfounded hatred, which is Egypt, to unfounded love, which is uh, uh, Israel. And uh, what you're gonna see is that in the Passover Seder, as we explain later, you're gonna see that there's these uh, different levels, different forces that are at play when we are celebrating the Seder of Pesa. Now, in the Seder, in these 15 steps that we are uh, participating and that we are performing, there are other elements as well over the table of Pesa. And one of the elements, a very important element, is matzo. Matzo, it's uh, it's an eleven breath. It represents a detachment from our egoistic nature. It's called the basically is is it's, it eleven represents you know all this ego that gets you know puffed up and it's uh it's uh it becomes egoistic and uh, hamets which is uh, uh the eleven is a desire to enjoy. 11 is not bad it depends you know how it is used what is the intention so before passover we are using the desire to enjoy for the sake of receiving after passover the transformation that we get you know that we go from unfounded hatred to unfounded love is that now we start enjoying but for the sake of giving the sake of giving to others for the sake of giving to the creator that means, you know, that everything we do is for the sake of the love of God and for the sake of the love of our neighbors. Okay. Another element that we have is moror. Moror is the desire to receive. It's basically the, the pain that we feel uh, uh, when we don't have what we need. And... Uh, and and what, it's not what we need, actually. I, change, I should change that. When we don't have what we want because we will always have what we need is when we don't have what we want however we're gonna see that this maror eventually becomes sweet it's bitter it's painful but eventually becomes sweet and we're gonna see that a play once we uh reach that um, that part of the lesson then you're gonna have the 40 years in the desert 40 years in the desert are the stages of progress to become Israel. Israel meaning those who are looking to connect directly with the Creator. Yashar Kel, Israel, Yashar El, which is Yashar direct and El God. So those who want to connect directly with the light, with the Creator. And then you have the land of Israel. It is Israel. Once People unite as one man with one heart. They marry the light of Gan Eden. And that is called Eretz Israel. The light that our ancestor uh, Adam lost when he broke into pieces. Because of, uh, of the sin of eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay. So, we mentioned in... Let me see that slide. When we mentioned in this slide that it was done that this uh, uh, redemption from Egypt, that this exodus from Egypt was basically made by the Creator out of His mercy, what does that mean? That means the following. It means to sweeten the judgment of exile, God Lud, and bring him redemption, Gola. You know, and I know that 
the Israelites were in Egypt, they were in exile, but there's also spiritual exile at this moment. And that exile that uh, is an exile that we are all in. Okay, so we're in a state of God loot, and uh, we are looking for this future redemption, right? This Geula. Um, as some Kabbalists, including some of my, my teachers, uh, have mentioned, we have the state of Israel. And people say, well, we, we are in exile because we want there's the state of Israel. But the state of Israel at this moment, uh, Kabbalistically speaking, and spiritually speaking, is still at the level of the nations. It has not been elevated to the point that it's really, really the Eretz Israel uh, that, that has the light that it needs. So even though there's physically a state of Israel, the people that live in the land are in what is called spiritual exile or in a state of Gadlut um, because it's still in the level of the nations. Now, why God's mercy came at play in Pesach during that night? Because God made a promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that even though these uh, descendants of these three patriarchs were going to go into exile, the Creator will remember them. The Creator will take them out of exile and bring them back uh, to the land and given, the land actually of, of Israel. Also, the Creator wanted a holy nation. Why he wanted a holy nation? Because, remember we talked about the, the nations are basically the desire to receive, their egoistic desire. Israel is not a desire to receive, Israel is a desire to bestow, a desire to do things for the sake of heaven. So, in order to do that, he needed to take out of the nations, meaning Misraim, a group of people that will become a holy nation, separated from the rest. These people that will develop these desires, uh, or these is, is this, um, altruistic desires, by uniting as one man as and one heart. And through this, the Creator then was able to achieve, uh, uh, basically injecting spirituality in creation once again, through humanity's correction, because this exodus is, is so important, like I mentioned before, it has to do with every human being. Not only this is an exodus that happened individually, it's an exodus that happened collective, collectively. And also, when this exodus uh, took place, it was the beginning of what we call the end of correction. Humanity, from that point on, was injected with light from above, like that reforms, in order to make things like they were before the fall of our father Adam, Harishan. Okay? Now, having that in mind, what Pesach is all about, uh, we need to keep in mind that There are some elements that we're going to see and we're going to study, but there's also a preparation that we need to go through. And in that preparation, we basically are doing some connections with the, um, with the, with, with the month of the years, specifically with the Hebrew months. And we do a connection uh, with the tribes of, of, the, of, of Israel, we do a connection with uh, the permutation of the name Yohe Va and the He. And also we meditate using the 72 names of God and the Anabekoah. And this is done through a cycle of 13 days. And these 13 days are basically the first 13 days of the month of Nisan. And during those 13 days, each day we are doing a meditation for each of, that, of those months. Then the 14th, we start searching for the Hamets. And what does searching for the Hamet means? Searching for Hamets and burning the Hamets means that we're doing an internal 
soul searching and everything that has to do with egoistic nature everything that that we're supposed to uh, uh, eliminate before entering a higher level of uh, spirituality or before we create this vessel that is supposed to be altruistic is supposed to be a recipient of the light in order to bestow it uh, we need to make sure that there's no trace of any egoistic thoughts intentions or actions and to do that we meditate on these 13 days and we also at the end uh, uh, uh basically nisan the 14th before we start pesach we cancel and know anything and we do that you know uh, uh, using our, our mouth we express it as uh, that we cancel and know any leaven any egoistic desire that is still living uh, that, that, that we have forgotten or we couldn't find in our soul searching in our inner searching okay so it's very important to do these connections if you don't have um, uh, basically a place to connect or anything like that during these days uh, just send me uh, an email go to www.receivingtheoperlight.com and I will send you to a place where you can actually uh, connect uh, there's also uh, for those of you uh, who are interested it's also Kabbalah for all uh, Kabbalah for all.com is doing these kind of uh, connections so it's a good opportunity to connect so what we're doing what we're doing that also during the whole month we need to connect to the energies of the month of Nisan and also the sign of Aries and Aries the ram you know is basically a representation of uh, what the sacrifice of Pesach is all about so uh, in Pesach uh, the sacrifice was basically the symbol of a god of Egypt you know and not only was this you know uh, like the blood that they use and everything a symbolism of uh, of protection against the plague that the creator was gonna uh, send to Mitzrayim all that kind of stuff it, it also has to do with um, with what the energy what the angel of Mitzrayim was trying to achieve and couldn't achieve and uh, we know by, if you have something the Parsha speci specifically Parsha Bo and onward uh, the angel of Mitzrayim it's a uh, it's Samael the only way that he that the creator was able to mm, mm, do everything do all these miracles do all this stuff and take the people out it was by taking away the last two letters from this angel's name the last two letters are the Aleph and the Lamed so he only has some so he didn't have the power or the nourishment from the creator in order to be powerful enough to basically deter what was coming to Mizraim and uh, and that's basically was done by the sacrifice of the Paschal Lamb represented by Arius and also uh, one of the gods of Egypt basically it was an, a, an affront to the Egyptians look what we can do to your god you know he has no power okay also in this month uh, we do some Kavano, some uh, connections intentions for the month and this month is ruled by the sign of Aries and the planet Mars and Mars represents basically war right but we need to see this as not not as something negative not as something that is going to uh, create some type of uh, real war uh, outside this is an internal war it's a war between uh, the egoistic nature and the altruistic nature and we need to meditate in in in, in this you know on these letters also there's a permutation 
of the name of God during this month. And also in the Anna Bekoach, we're going to be meditating on the letters Nun Gimel Dalit, Yod Kav Shin. And they represent basically the energy of Tifarit and the center column, basically. And when we meditate in this, uh, on these permutations of the name of God and also on the Anabekoach, uh, six letters of the Anabekoach, we need to meditate and imagine them, visualize them with a wick or, 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 or fire in the top, okay? As they have, a, like if there were a candle, like there were candles, okay? And you meditate on them. Make sure you visualize those letters of black fire with regular fire in the top. Also, what we do is, during this month, we take the first six letters, six names of God, of the 72 names of God, and we meditate on them. These 72, or these six names of the 72 names of God belong to the sign of Arius. And that's why we meditate on that. So this actually is to meditate in, for example, let's go uh, name by name. This way we can see what we're supposed to do with these 72 names in this month. The Vav He Vav basically is time travel. So it's just, you know, to give us an insight of what was and what, why it happened, and not only why it happened, but also what will happen as a consequence, right? Recapturing the sparks, recapturing basically the spiritual life, making miracles. Well, Pesach is, is all about miracles. So this is the time the doors are open for miracles. Cleaning negative thoughts, meaning eliminating or egoistic desires or negative negativity that will make us, you know, make everything in our lives stagnant and, and, and not move at all. Healing, meaning this is the time that we need to heal from our egoistic nature. Egoistic nature is like being uh, a leper, basically. So we, we need to ask for healing spiritually, and that healing will manifest also uh, physically. And connecting to our, our dreams. What dreams are they? Um, I know some teachers, you know, might teach about this, about, yeah, you becoming a millionaire, your business, and that kind of stuff. And I hear a lot of teachers talking about using Kabbalah for business and things like that. This is not about this. The real dream that we're talking about here is the dream of achieving spirituality. Once you achieve spirituality, once you heal yourself spiritually, once you clean yourself, and, and, and once you accept the miracles that the Creator is doing in, in, in you, once you connect to your uh, spiritual spark and once you understand that what was in the past what is in the present and what comes in the future it all comes from the creator you will be connected to these six names and you will achieve anything in life doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have a great business or be a millionaire but you will be happy with your lot and that's the whole point the egoistic nature is never happy with what others have and is never happy with what it has. And when it has what others have, still wants more. So this is why we need to heal and this is why we need to clean ourselves. Okay, so that's the whole point of the meditation of these six names, because this is a time when we can ask for that miracle, for that energy. And for that mercy of the Creator to come and help us. Okay. Now, so now we're gonna go and we're going to talk about Pesach in a more in depth. This is the part that I want you to take a Passover Haggadah. You have Haggadah and make notes in it as we go through it because we're going to be talking about different um, things that are happening during the Seder of Pesach and you want to make sure that you're not missing this that you're not missing the flow of what is happening in the Passover Seder 
because if you have it written down in your personal Haggadah that you use for yourself, you will see and you can meditate and you can connect to what is happening uh, during this um, 15 steps that we're going to uh, be studying. So, what is Pesach? Now we're going to go to um, more kind of like harder language to understand for some, but you will see it will make sense at the end. So Pesach is a holiday of divine intervention, as we mentioned before. In this case, as we mentioned before, is divine intervention due to his mercy, due to the creator's mercy, due to God's mercy. Why? Well, first of all, because there are four levels of intervention. There's one uh, level uh, that that basically is divine intervention with man's interaction. So it's man and God working together. And this is uh, this interaction or this intervention itself has two levels. The first level is getting close closer to God to God by mitzvah. So when you get closer to God by performing mitzvot, it's because you're doing these mitzvot as medita uh, meditation. You know, it's not just a as a religious person. It's, uh, you're doing it as a religious person, but you're also meditating on what you're doing. Remember the prayer that those of us who practice Kabbalah uh, and, and Kabbalistic intentions as well, during prayer is that we are doing you know this mitzvah because we're trying to connect the yohe with the vafe right also this divine intervention with man's interaction has to do with shabbat and the yom tov shabbat and the holidays so this is the first interaction you if you have taken the lessons on the other holidays you're gonna see how we when we participate in this holiday, we elevate Mahut towards Bina. And sometimes Bina is the one that comes down to Mahut and all that, specifically in the high holidays. Uh, we talk about that a lot. Um, now, there's another level, the level of divine intervention without man's interaction. And these also have four, uh, no, four, no, two levels. The first level is through the mercy of God, which is what happened in the Exodus of Egypt. And the other one is that the person doesn't recognize a creator, doesn't care if there's a creator, doesn't even probably know that there's a creator, and there's a natural flow of nature. Man is unaware of God's interaction in the universe. But it doesn't matter if man believes or not, or has faith or not, the show will go on, okay? The creator is not going to stop the development of the spiritual um, sparks in humanity because this person is not acknowledging him. Okay, so in Pesach, God's mercy is at work. So it's this level of divine intervention without man's interaction. No interaction is required, just the creation of a vessel to receive the light of redemption. And... How do we create that vessel? Like I mentioned before, through the performance of the 15 steps of the Passover Seder. And you're going to say, well, you're saying that divine intervention without man's interaction, but Moshe was there when that happened. Moshe was there to go to Pharaoh, but the miracles and everything was basically the creator doing everything um, and telling Moshe what to do, not Moshe. Uh, asking the creator to do this or do that. Moshe was basically um, an agent, but not a co-participant on all of these things, meaning that he didn't create anything new in this thing. Until after the Matan Torah, the receiving of the Torah. Okay, so now, so we mentioned that we have, you know, these four levels of intervention, you get closer to God by the Mitzvot, you get closer to God by Shabbat and Yom Tov, then you don't, the other, the other two, you don't interact or there's no interaction, it's just God acting 
for because of his own mercy and then God acting because man is ignorant of the creator but the universe continue nature continues its flow and continues uh, developing itself now how do we create uh, a vessel or clay to receive the light of redemption well how do we do the, this first of all we need to understand certain uh, concepts so we can understand why uh, it's important uh, basically to have these connections during the Passover Seder. The divine intervention, when we talk about divine intervention, we're talking about mohin. Mohin is the word for brain in Hebrew. And what you're going to see is that there are four brains, four mohin. There are two in Katnut and two in Gatlut. Two in, Gat, in Katnut means two in smallness. And two in Gatlut means two in greatness. So two are small and two are big, right? Or great. Now, what we're going to see is that you're going to have also in this small and big mohin, which are four, right, four mohin, two in greatness and two in smallness, is that they also divide in certain levels. Katnut Rishon and Shetni, meaning smallness, first, small, first smallness and second smallness, and then Katlu Rishon and Shetni, first greatness and second greatness. Now, you might think that Rishon, the first one, is the great one. No, Sheni is the highest form of him. So what we're doing here is in the Seder, we are in a process that we're passing from the level of Rishon, which is the first level, to Sheni, to a second level in the Mohins, right? So to put it into a more uh, modern uh, way to think about it. We're talking here about the left brain and right brain. The left brain is Mohin Katnut, which is this, the, the small brain. It is the rational mind, is Bina. It's also the force of the name Elohim and is symbolized by the wine. The right brain is Mohin Katnut, which is the big brain, the, the Mohin in greatness is the mind of the soul it is equal to faith above logic and reason and is symbolized or represented by the matzah and you're gonna say faith above logic and reason so this is a, if, if you're telling me a fairy tale i have i'm believing it you know that's the mind of the soul no logic and reason doesn't mean that you have blind faith this is faith with certainty is very different from the religion's uh, f uh, definition of faith, okay? This is faith above reason, uh, what reason about what we think, about what we rationalize. I see you, you see me, we see two different persons. When we are not putting that reasoning in our way, we see each other as one, as one soul, okay? Now, in order to understand this, uh, we need to know the following that Mohin Katnut, as we mentioned before, is Bina, Mohin Katlut, as we mentioned before, is Hokna. So, this is represented in the following way here. So, in Bina, Mohin Katnut Sheni is number two, and Mohin Katnut Rishon is number one. So, it's like Bina is divided into two. It's like this fear is divided into two, okay? The same thing with Hokma here, the Mohingat Lushani and Mohingat Lurishan. It's like we're dividing Hokma into two. So in Bina, Mohingat Nurishan is the first Katnut, is the divine intervention without action from man. Then in the top, Mohingat Nut Sheni, which is a higher form, remember, uh, Sheni is always higher is divine intervention with man following 
halacha, meaning with the mitzvot, right? In Chokmah, the Mohin Gatlut Rishon, the first Gatlut, uh, the first great one, is basically a great level of divine intervention, uh, meaning miracles, Shabbat, Yom Tov, Brit Milah, you know, so this is when you are connected somehow with the light in, in by doing or celebrating Shabbat, Yom Tov, Brit Milah, and all that. That's Mohingat Luhishan. Now, Mohingat Lusheni is a maximum level of divine intervention. This is Moshe, Moshiach, Gan Eden on Earth. Okay? And I'm correcting this as I go because after this, um, all this presentation, all these slides are going to be available at the website receiving the operlight.com as a PDF form for you to, to have it for free. Okay? So if you are taking notes and that kind of stuff, you you also you know can have this as a PDF form in uh, in the website receiving the upper light .com. But take notes because that's a better way to remember things, uh, especially if you're writing it in the in your personal agada. Now, all the concepts that we need to keep in mind is the following: as we mentioned, there are uh, some. Uh, levels or steps that we're going to be doing during uh, Pesach. And during these steps, we have to meditate uh, or do certain connections, certain kavanot. For example, in the first cup, uh, which is uh, Kaddish, or the, 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 the Kiddush, the first Kiddush we do in the first cup, we are going to be meditating on the name Elohim, expanded as Aleph Lamed Pei, Lamed Mem Dalet, Hey Hey Yod Vav Dalet, Mem and Mem Sofit, and that is considered Mohin Gadlut Rishon. And uh, Mohin Gadlut Rishon is basically the lower part of Ochotno. Okay. Then the second cup, which is uh, uh, during or after the Magid, uh, what we're gonna be doing is. Also meditating on the name Elohim as Aleph Lame Pe, Lame Men Dalet, He Aleph, Yod Vav Dalet Mem, Mem Sofit. And this is Mohin Katnut Rishon. So now Bina, the, the lower part of Bina. So the red is basically the Katnut, the blue is the Gatlut. Okay, so we're connecting to this part over here. Um, then on the matzah, the multi matzah part, we have the regular matzah and the broken matzah, right? That we eat. So in there, instead of meditating on the name Elohim, because the name Elohim signifies what? Uh, restriction, it signifies Geburah, basically, judgment. In here, we're meditating in the four letter name, Yohe, Vav, and the He, which is. Um, the symbolism basically of, of seramping and mercy okay so in here we meditate in the yohe vav and the he expanded as yod vav dalit he yod vav yod vav he yod and that's mohingat lusheni mohingat lusheni basically this uh is basically appear now so now uh, in this one we were below, in this one we elevate ourselves to Gatlut Sheni. With the broken bread, uh, we also meditate in the name Yohe Vav and the He, as Yo Vav Dalet, He Alef, Vav Alef Vav, He Alef, and that is Mohin Gatlut Rishon. So now we're here. So with this, if you, if you can see Mohingat Lu Sheni, Mohingat Lu Rishon, it gives us the whole sphere, the whole chokma, the whole sphere of chokma. Uh, when when you look at it this way, okay. Now there are other uh, kamanot that we can do. The matzah itself, remember up here we were. Uh, with the matzah, we were basically at Mohingat Lusheni. Here, 
we are going to be uh, with the matzah only. The matzah only will be the name of uh, the four letter name expanded as Yod Vav Dalet, He Yod Vav Aleph Vav, He Yod, and that will give us the Mohinga Lut Rishon. So it's down here. Then when it comes to the Tzafon, which is a uh, Fikomen, then we are meditating with the name, the four letter name Yod He Vav, and the He Tseva Ot. And we expand the four letter name as Yod Vav Dalet, He Yod Vav Yod Vav, He Yod. And Sebaot, we don't expand it, we just leave it Sebaot. And that will give you Gatlut uh, Sheni, the top. So Gatlut Rishon, Gatlut Sheni will give us basically the whole sphere as well. Okay? Um, and, and this is basically what we have in the Motsi Masa, in this second connection that we do, or this second Kavanot that we do with it, with the Matsa and the Safon we do the same thing we connect to that then again we go to the name elohim because the wine represents you know the the the, the gebura part right now we're going to expand the name elohim with the borek okay and this is uh the third cup and it's going to be expanded as Aleph, Lamed, Pei, Lamed, Men, Dalet, He, Yod, Yod, Vav, Dalet, Men, and Men, Sofit. And that will give us Mohin, Katnut, Sheni, which is the top part of Bina. Now, the last one is interesting because we will not be expanding this name. What we're going to be is we're changing the three letters in the middle of the name Elohim for the letter that precedes these three letters so before the lamet you're going to have the calf before the hey you're going to have the dalet and before the yod you're going to have the teth and those three letters we're going to put it in the middle of the aleph and the mem and that's when we're doing the halel that was give, that will give us mohin katnut sheni uh, and that will be the top part of bina as well okay now you're going to say okay um this is kind of complicated. You're going to see as we go through the 15 steps that is going to start making sense and how you can apply this. So we're already on almost one hour in this lesson. So we prepare for another hour as we um, continue with this part, which is uh, the part of, uh, of the practice and how we can apply this. And right now we're in the different elements and after the different elements, we're going to go through the 15, 15 steps and it's going to uh, make more sense. So there's three things that we are using during Passover. And it's the Pesach, Matzah, and Maror, right? So when you add all these uh, letters, the numerical value of all these letters, Pesach is 148, Matzah is 135, Maror is 446. When you add them, they give you 729. 729 is equivalent or is the same value as the name in the Arab Koach, the second name that has to do with Gebura, which is Kra Satan. Uh, and why is this important to keep in mind? Because this is what we're doing. Remember when we talk about the angel of Egypt is Samael and, the, and then God took the force from this angel, took the Aleph and the, and the Lamed uh, from this angel in order to uh, make it or make him uh, weak so he cannot do anything. This is the same thing we're doing when we're celebrating Passover. We're taking away the power of judgment and we're sweetening that judgment with with what we're doing uh, during this time. So Krasta means we are going to be in battle. Mars, right? We're going to be in a battle with our egoistic nature or internal Satan, okay? Which is our own Pharaoh, right? Then each cup there are four cups and this is something you know that you gonna see the cups are very important they're the ones that also not only 
Uh, we're going to have this uh, cabanot that I mentioned before with the cups and the matzah. Um, but each cup represents uh, a different level in, in the seder. So the first cup is the Persian uh, exile. Represents the body, represents the nephesh. And this cup is a cup of sanctification, which is represented by the words of the Creator when He said, I will bring you out from under the burden of the Egyptians. The second cup represents the Vav and the name Yohe Vav He. It, it represents the Babylonian exile. It's nephesh, spirit in a person. It represents the Ruach, which is like the the the, the not the spirit, but it's like the, the, the breath of God in there. It's a cup of self, uh, sanctification. We bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptian. Actually, I think uh, I repeated that, but that's not what the cup is supposed to say. Let me quickly. So these are four. And this one, it says... Uh, make sure I have the writing. I will free you from slavery, she said. I will free you from slavery. And uh, and and that's the second promise there. And then the third cup is uh, represented by the letter He, the first He of the name Yohe Vav He. Represents a Greek exile. It's Sechel, or mine, and it represents the level of our soul called the Neshama. It's a cup of redemption. And it says, I will redeem you with an outstretched arm. Then the last cup is represented by the letter Yod and is uh, represented by the Roman exile. And this exile is the longest one. We're still in this exile. Even though some people say we have the land of Israel, we're still in this exile, the Roman exile. It's a uh, Hakal transcendence and it has to do with Haya, which is uh, or one of our, uh, the highest level above the neshama of her soul. It's a cup of praise, and it's uh, uh, the promise, I will take you as my people, okay? Then there's another cup, and that's the cup of Elijah. And that cup is represented by the dot of top of the yod, which represents infinity and the level of yehida, unification with the creator. And then you're going to see that kind of like what we're going through kind of like contradict. It's like uh, instead of being in the last hay, which represents uh, uh, in, in, in when you're talking about the four worlds, represents basically Asiya, you're going to see that in the Haggadah, we are basically starting with the world of Atsilut. And uh, you're going to be like, uh, what is the contradiction uh, here? You know, it's uh, uh, the word of Atsilut. And it's because of the inversion between light and vessel. We're going to explain that so you can understand it. Okay. Now the three matzot. The three matzot become four pieces. And the top masa is so always going to be three matzot that are going to be uh, used by the person that is... Uh, directing the seder and the top matzah represents chokmah the middle matzah represents bina and the bottom matzah represents that and all together remember uh let me see if i can find it again when we talk about matzah the numerical value of matzah is 135 right 135 is the sum total of Ab and Sachs, 72 and 63. Ab is basically the uh, name of God expanded in Chokma, and Sag is the name of God expanded as in Bina. Okay, it's 135, which is the word for the name of the bread, which is Matzah. The middle bread is broken into two, which is uh, the level of being broken into two, and one side, the smaller side, becomes the afikomen. Okay, and we're going to talk about the afikomen later, the, the significance of that bread. And this way becomes four pieces. And um, we have the wine, we have the bread, and we have also the salahat. 
So the Salahat is a plate, and this plate represent uh, is, uh, it has a, uh, basically uh, represent all the attributes of the things that we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be studying you know one by one, all the attributes and all these things that we are going to go through this uh, setter. So first thing is uh, the first I would say symbolic food that we need to pay attention is the soroa. Soroa is a bone. Um, it represents Hesed and it's representative of the patriarch Abraham. And what this food is supposed to do is to awaken mercy inside us. Then you have the Beitza. The Beitza represents the forces of Gebura. And even though this Gebura is basically telling us this food is making basically uh, making us strong, is making us you know uh, accept uh, the force that the Creator gives us in order to navigate all the intricacies and craziness of life. Okay. And then the other, the the one that follows it, um, it's the maror, and maror is represent it represents Tiferet, and Chesed represents Abraham, Geburah, Isaac, Tiferet is Jacob, and maror is bitter, is bitter, and the numerical value for maror is equal to the numerical value for mavet, which is death in Hebrew. And what is telling us here is that this bitterness is a, uh, to use you know modern day uh, uh, words, it's like a vaccine against death. It's, it's a remedy for death. It gives us life, even though it is bitter. And it is said that when you eat it, even though it's bitter in the beginning, it becomes sweet at the end. Then we have the Haroset. The Haroset represents Netzach and Moshe. It has life in it. Um, it's there basically to sweeten the justice, to sweeten Geburah. Uh, then we have the Hod. Uh, Hod is uh, the Karpas and uh, is represented by a Haron. And what this food is supposed to do is to connect us to the 6,000 souls that were in Egypt, 6,000 souls of Israel that were in Egypt, okay, to make us remember, you know, what they went through uh, when it comes to the tears and, and the sweat that they went through. Then we have the Haseret, which is a uh, representative of Yesod, and Yosef Hasadik. This food basically symbolizes a vessel that collects all the energy available uh, so we can correct the chaos in our lives. And then we have the Tzalachat. The Tzalachat is a plate. The Tzalachat represents Mahut. And this is where we basically do our work. This is where we manifest everything. This is where we make those energies that we have accumulated uh, in, in, in the Sefira Yesod. We, we transfer it to this level called Mahut and make, uh, make things happen. It's also where we work in order to achieve spiritual freedom. Okay. And when you look at the plate, depending on the plate that you have, of course, but the uh, most tra traditional plates, you know, are round. They also uh, form a um, Magen David, uh, the way their f the food is uh, put on them. So now, let's go and talk about the 15 steps of the Passover Seder. This is where you want to have your Agadah in your hand and make notes as we go through it, okay? So, these 15 steps of Pesach, they parallel the 15 steps in the temple in Jerusalem. 
also represents the first two letters of the four letter name yo he and the vow he okay i don't know what that said it was there um so what we need to understand is that these 15 steps and the reason they are correlate to the steps in the temple of jerusalem is because these are steps of ascension steps of elevate elevating ourselves okay now remember when i told you about the the, the cops and how this might look contradictory because uh if you probably see uh kabbalistic haggadah you're gonna see that the last cup actually has the yod uh has the hay and the yod is on the first cup right and then the hay is on the second cup and then the vav is on the third cup and then the last hay is on the the last cup here we're going to explain why uh this look contradictory and you're going to see so there's an inverse relationship between light and vessel okay so what you're going to see is that this here Let's put it uh, this way, the four worlds. This is how the Haggadah actually works. We're going to be starting in Atzilut. We're going to go to Bria, Yesira, and Asiya. However, this is what's going to happen. In the first cup that we are going to be drinking, represents the word of Atzilut, right? However, here it says, is the last hay. Right, so it's contradictory. You know why it's the last hey? Because it's the light of nefesh that we're receiving. So in here we're talking about the world. Here we're talking about the light of the spirit, the light of our soul. All right, this is the light of our soul. Okay, nefesh, ruach, neshama, and chaya, not the world itself. But what we're gonna be doing is we are gonna be lowering each of those lights into each of these worlds so let's say let me see if i can move this to the side let's say i start my first cup my first cup is gonna look like this it's gonna be the world of absolute and with the light of nefesh and then as we continue let me see if i can make a move then it's gonna go lower that means on the second cup what i'm gonna have is the word of bria but now i have the light of ruach in it okay so what we're gonna do is the following when we're performing this uh we're gonna see that then after the third cup on the third cup what we're gonna have is the word of jesira but it's with the light of neshama then on the last cup we're going to see that everything is going to be aligned so we're going to have the world of asia but now we're going to be achieving or bringing down the light of haya okay so that's this is how you need to see uh the four cups and that's why you know if you look at uh, kabbalistic haggadah it might they might start you know with the Yod He Vav He with the word of Hatzilut and Asiya. However, the way we're looking at it is what light is entering there with the cup. Okay, so we're going to be talking about the first cup is the light of Nefesh, second cup is the light of Ruach, third cup is the Neshama, the fourth cup is Chaya. However, when it comes to the worlds, it's all the opposite. Okay, and we're going to see that in each of the presentations that uh, each of the slides that we have. Okay, okay, so. There are 15 steps on the Seder of Pesach. The first step is called Kadesh, Sanctity. The second, Urchatz, which is wash your hands, you know, washing your hands. Karpatz is an appetizer, which is the first thing we're going to be eating. Yachatz is breaking the middle of Matzah. The Magid is telling the story of the Exodus. The Rachza is washing our hands again, this time with a blessing. It's everybody, not just the person that is doing the 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 the, the or directing the Passover seder and the motzi which is a blessing over the bread 
and the matzah we eat the matzah the maror the bitter herb the korech which is the hill sandwich that we eat and then shuhan arech which is the we eat the 50th, uh, 50th meal with uh, everybody then tzafon we eat the afikomen barech which is uh, the great after meals and then we do halel which is psalms of praise and then the nirsa which means you know that everything was accepted according uh, accordingly and that uh, we are um and, and basically we are done for now because the job continued with the Safira Haomer. Now the first step is the Kodesh. Kodesh means sanctity, right? And in here what we're gonna be doing is we're going to fill the first cup and we're going to sanctify that cup. Uh, we do it by the Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Borei Pri Hagafen, right? Which is the... Uh, and... We drink that cup. Then after that, we have another step. But before we do that step, we got, you have to make sure you understand that is also a time when we do the Shechechianu. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Shechechianu Vekiyamanu Vehigianu Lasman Hase. Blessed are your God of our universe who has given us uh, the chance to live through this occasion, through, the, through this time, or, uh, to reach this time, basically. Because we're starting a new connection with say, the Shechechianu. We're starting something new. And this is a... Uh, um, this cup is connected to the first six letters of the Anabekoah, or the six letter name of the Anabekoah, which means Chesed. Like I mentioned before, it represents Atzilut, however, it also has the letter He, as you can see here, is because it is the word of Atzilut with the light of Nefesh. And as we say the blessing over the wine, we pray for the abundance of light in our lives. Okay, we also concentrate in, in, in that we want to build a vessel of uh, of light in our lives. So during this uh, blessing of this cup, we are going to have the kavanot that we mentioned before. Remember the kavanot that we were talking about: mochin gadlut, mochin katnut. Now in this uh, first. Uh, cup, we're gonna start concentrating on those kavanot. So in the Kaddish, we concentrate in the name Elohim, expanded, and expanded in a way that will help us reach Mohin Gatlud Rishon. Mohin Gatlud Rishon is the lower part of Hokna, right here. Okay, and I have put this in the slide so you can have a better sense of okay, where where am I when I'm meditating on this name. Am I in the top of Chokma, bottom of Chokma, top of Bina, or bottom of Bina? Then after we do this uh, this uh, blessing over the wine, we drink the wine, we do what is called the washing of the hands. And when we're doing this washing of our hands, we need to eliminate on eliminating negativity from ourselves to build trust. Uh, no blessing is recited during this time. And Uchatz means uh, in Aramaic, trust. So basically it's a way to eliminate negativity and start building trust um, among ourselves. It's like uh, the Israelite in Egypt, they needed to come together, right? In order to achieve freedom, to achieve redemption. So this is uh, what we're talking here with this washing. Then we're gonna go to the Karpas. In the Karpas, uh, which is, it can be parsley. What we do is uh, um, we dip it in salt water and the salt water represents basically the tears that the Bene Israel shed during during the exile in Egypt. And when we're doing that and when we're eating that carpas, we need to meditate on the 6,000 souls who were in Egypt to remind us of the slavery of limitation and egoistic thoughts and what we need to leave as quick as we can 
this egoistic nature in us, okay? The fourth step is the yahats. The yahats is basically basically the breaking of the middle matzah. And this matzah now is divided into two, giving us four pieces, right? The bigger part is kept together with the three other matzah, and that part represents the vav of seramping. And the small portion, which is going to be the afikomen, represents the letter dalit, which is the nukba. But remember, uh, dalit represents Mars, which is also war, right? But in this case, it's basically that these two are separated. These two are not together. And one has light, which is the ramping, has a light, but one has not received the light. Therefore, it's considered dal, poor, bread of the poor. But when these two connect, meaning this dalit goes underneath, I mean, this valve goes underneath this dalit, they form the hay. Okay? They form a hay. The hay means mahut with it's all with all the light basically seramping was able to give nukba the light and nukba has received it now we have a vessel and this vessel is a vessel basically that can receive the light properly and that's what we're trying to do in in passover as we mentioned before to create a vessel that can receive all this light of redemption then the fifth step is the story of the exodus of egypt in this step what we do is um we fill the cup for a second time and the other plate is uh in, in, in at least in the way we do it he, here in my house we remove the other plate from the table because now we're gonna dedicate our time to talk about uh the four children the exodus from egypt the ten plagues and then we sing the Dayenu. Uh, we talk about the uh, Pesach Matzah uh, Maror. And then after that, what we do is we uh, bless the second cup of wine and we drink it. Well, during this time, the second cup of wine represents the word of Bria and has the letter Vav, meaning that it achieved that letter uh basically it's, uh, in the word of ria which is represented by the letter hey but also received the light of ruach which is represented by the letter vav okay now during that time of the magid like i mentioned before we talk about the exodus we to say the story of the exodus from egypt and we talk about the 10 plagues of egypt we mentioned them and as we mentioned, then we take wine and put a drop of it in a plate, symbolizing that even though we're joyous for our freedom, we um, we are also need to remember that our freedom uh, had a price. You know, there was suffering uh, for the Egyptians as well when this happened. Okay, so each of that basically is. Uh, the wine is joy, so we're taking a drop of our joy because of uh, of what happened, mm -hmm. and that is because we're trying to follow, you know, what the Talmud, Megillah ten b and Sanhedrin thirty nine b says, uh, uh, that the angels of the Creator were rejoicing because of the children of Israel's uh, redemption and crossing of the Red Sea, and 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 they were basically uh, rejoicing because the Egyptians were drowning, and the Creator said, "How dare you sing?" For joy when my creatures are dying you know because even though the egyptians were uh considered the strong desire to receive strong egoistic nature it's also a creation of the uh, of the creator so it, they're also you know part of of his creation okay now that in the magi we tell the story of exodus and we need to concentrate uh or uh basically have the intention of Kavanot, concentrating the name Elohim on um, the second cup. And that will give us, uh, when we expand it with the Aleph, 
Mohin Katnud Rishan. Mohin Katnud Rishan is basically the bottom part of Bina. Okay. Then we wash our hands again in the Hrapsa. So now we wash our, our hands and this time we do say the blessing. Netilat Yadaim. Okay. Uh, Netilat Yadaim is recited to elevate our hands. We elevate our labor to a higher degree to be able to participate in the eating of the matzah. So our labor, meaning the things that, we, that we're doing now, we're gonna basically go higher. We are basically at the level of um, at the level of the vav, which is you know we came from um, from. As, as Silu, we're bringing down the light. Now we're going to bring it down all the way down to us. But at the same time, the light right now is Ruach. So in order to achieve that higher life, uh, Neshama and Chaya, we need to be totally clean, totally becoming people or persons or group of or, or a nation that has no desire to receive for the sake of receiving. The, but that we want to be like that second hay that is coming down now we're going to be all giving we're going to be altruistic okay all right so the next one the next steps actually you can say there are like two steps it's step number seven the motzi and the motzi what we do is we make a blessing over the bread and we do it in a way that is a blessing as if it was a regular bread. We say, um, uh, which is, you know, who brings bread from the land. But then we do also blessing over the matzah. In this case, you know, uh, we, we, at the end, we, t we give thanks to the creator, you know, who has commanded us to eat the matzah, you know, uh, basically a hilat matzah. And there's a symbolic thing uh, in, in this as well in Shulchan Sher Arba, chapter 1, verse 10. It says, And thus you will find 10 words in the blessing Hamasi. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And the reason for that is to remember that the tree of life that we need to connect, right? The, the, the tree of life that we're supposed to partake of which is the center column, that we're supposed to sweeten the judgment with mercy. And that's why the Hamotzi has 10 words, meaning it's, everything is well balanced. With the Motzi Matzah, we're going to be meditating on the names Yohe Vav He, expanded, and that will give us Mohingat Lusheni. Mohingat Lusheni is the top part of Hogma, and then when we uh, eat the the, the 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 broken matzah, that will give us mohingat lutrishon, which is the bottom part of hokma. So basically, gives you the whole sphere of hokma. It's all about hokma here, uh, wisdom. Then we meditate on the matzah itself, and uh, we expand the name. Of the uh, the Yohe, Bab, and the He, and that will give us Mohin Gatlud Rishon. Mohin Gatlud Rishon. So we are basically at this level over here. And Gatlud Rishon, remember, that's a divine intervention, miracle, Shabbat, Yom Tov, Brit Mila, you know. So right now is giving us the, the energy of the Yom Tov, okay? The ninth step is Maror. Bitter herbs or moror. Um, maror, moror, meror. It, it, it doesn't matter how you mention it, you know. It's um, So, what you're going to have here is a bitter herb, which is a horseradish and most uh, plates. It has a numerical value of 446, which is the same numerical value as the word in Hebrew for death, which is mavet. And moror is a medicine against death. The bitterness of this root eventually becomes sweet. 
and and the bitterness in this is, is actually because of uh, the composition, the sugary composition, and it makes it bitter. But then, as you eat it, you you're gonna feel that sweetness uh, after flavor in it, and that's the symbolism in it. It also makes you cry when it's very acidic and bitter. Then we have what is called the korech. The korech is basically uh, it's called Hiller sandwich. The Hiller sandwich is a tradition that origin originated uh, by combine combining bread of the liberation and uh, and the bitterness of slavery. Basically, we we mix the the bitter herbs. We put you know some lettuce. We put also the haroset in order to sweeten that bitterness in it. So it's uh, mercy, sweetening justice, and it's also life and death. So it's life overtaking death, and it was instituted by the sage Hillel, and that's why it is called the Hillel sandwich. And after that, we then can partake of the festive meal, and we start with the egg that is in our um, salahat in our in our in our plate with the symbolic uh, food because the egg symbolizes the strength over the test of our lives it is is a force that we need in order to continue this war against the uh, evil inclination in ourselves the next step is the saffon where we eat the afikomen and there's a game in which uh, we hide the afikomen and then our kids need to find the afikomen and then they have to negotiate you know um, uh, to get something in exchange for the afikomen and all that there's some traditional explanations about it that we're not gonna go over it right now because uh, this is just an overview and it's taking uh, we're talking basically about the symbolic and the secrets behind all this not about the traditions but this uh, is basically is the clay, the vessel of energy of the letter Vav of Serampin this letter connects us with the tree of life's energy, revealing the hidden lights and the light of the end of correction. This is, a, as we say, you know, this is a bread of the messianic consciousness, and that's how, how we need to see it, the messianic consciousness. And uh, when we are eating the afikomen, we're gonna be meditating on the name Yohevab and He together with Sebaot, you know, so Hashem Sebaot. And that will give us Mohin Gatlu Sheni. Mohin Gatlu Sheni is the top part of Hokma. okay? Then after that, we do the Barich. Um, Barich basically is um, the Birkah Hamason, the blessing after meals. And we recite this blessing to elevate the divine sparks that were contained in the food we ate. It helps us understand that we need to be grateful for all things in, in life as well. So this is a way basically to know that what we have, we should not take it for granted, that we don't really deserve everything that we have. Sometimes we have it because of God's mercy and, uh, and, and we need to be grateful for it. And in the grace after meal, we do the kavana of the name Elohim because now we're gonna feel um, the third cup, and this third cup uh, is going to connect us to the world of Yesira, and is going to bring down the light of Neshama. And it's at this time, let me see, I may have, um, okay. So it's at this time, you know, that when we feel, you know, this cup, we drink it, then we feel as uh, the, the next cup. And this next cup is gonna be the uh, fourth cup. The fourth cup, uh, is going to connect us to the world of Asiyah 
And in here we're gonna see that it's um, it's the light of Chaya, uh, you know that 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 is with us at that moment, okay. And uh, also when we are filling that cup, we are also filling the cup of Elijah uh, and also the cup of Miriam and. The cup of Elijah and the cup of Miriam, they symbolize two things. And some people just do the cup of Elijah. We, in our uh, house, we do Elijah and Miriam uh, in order to incorporate the feminine aspect and, and in, our, in our own you know, family tradition. Elijah symbolizes the future messianic redemption. Miriam is the redemption in present times. So mirroring is the mercy that we are at this moment receiving. And wine represents the secrets, the Kabbalah that we are learning. Because uh, the word in Hebrew, yain, for wine, is equivalent to the word in Hebrew for secret, which is sot. Okay? And uh, mine in Kabbalah is equal to chesed, mercy. So what we need to understand is that... Uh, these two things are interconnected. We, those of us who are studying uh, the secrets of the Torah, we should find ourselves very grateful and understand that it's because of God's mercy that we are learning this. And it's because of this that also the redemption, uh, future redemption, it's uh, a hand. But it's because of the mercy of the Creator that we're learning that. So that's represented by Miriam. Uh, the redemption in present times. So, during that time, what we do is we open the door uh, to Elijah, but also what we are doing during this time when we are connecting, you know, with this uh, last cup and also the other cups that we mentioned, Elijah and Miriam, we're connecting to a basically a thought and intention and that thought and intention is to eradicate the memory of Amalek. As we drink we should meditate in eliminating all types of doubt when it comes to spirituality and the creator and that's eliminating the memory of Amalek in our lives. When we are in this uh, uh, during this time drinking this uh, fourth cup of wine we need to meditate on the name Elohim but in a different way when we are doing the, the Kavanot. What we're doing is the middle letters, Lamed, Hey, Yod, we're going to exchange them for the letters that precedes them. So the Kaf precedes the Lamed, the Dalet precedes the Hey, the Tet precedes the Yod. And then you have this new name over here, and that name will connect you to Mohin Katnut Sheni. Mohin Katnut Sheni is the top part of Bina, okay? Then the 15th and last step is the Nirza. Nirza basically it's um, um, basically something that we desire, that we desire to do what, that we desire that we will do this again in Jerusalem and things like that. But let's talk about the word Nirza. So the word Nirza can be divided into four parts. The Nun, the Rza, part, Resh, Sadi, and the He. The word in the, in, in the middle, these two letters, Ratz, it's basically desire. The Nun represents Bina, which is 50, the 50th gate, right? Bina. And the He is the last He of the Yo He Vav He, Mahut, okay? The Nukva. So you got Mahut and Bina, desire to receive, desire to bestow. And then this desire is the desire in the middle is basically the balance between these two. This, the, the balance between these two. You got desire to receive, desire to bestow. And you got to have now a different desire. A desire to receive in order to bestow. Okay? To change your desire to receive, Mahut, to a desire to bestow. And that's very important to understand because it's basically what we're doing is we're taking the last he of the name Yohe, Vav, and He and elevating 
that's a, that's remember the 15 steps of the temple was to elevate the person to a higher level so they can enter the temple here we're elevating through these 15 steps that lower hay to the level of bina and that's how we basically create the kli basically that's how we receive as we see here in this uh table as we receive you know those light and this vessel that you have out here that was there that represents the four worlds receive the lights of nefesh ruach neshama and chaya and we receive those lights of uh, um, on the holiday of pesach as it is marked by these 15 steps four cups and the matzah and the maro now there's a tradition that when we finish the Passover Seder, we say next year in Jerusalem. Leshana Haba'a be Jerusalem. Jerusalem or Jerusalem uh, is a city that exists in real uh, in the in reality, right? It's a place where the holy temple was located. It's a place where there was light in there when the temple was uh, in there. But also Jerusalem, you know, is Yir, a city, and Shalem, you know, it comes from Shalom, peace. It's also our heart. It's our heart. So we need to understand that what we're doing is next time we will do it with our rebuilt heart. We will do it with a proper intention, with a different heart. So every every year we should elevate ourselves higher and higher. So remember, every prayer that we do, everything that uh, that we try to connect with the Creator is called the duty of the heart or the work of the heart. And there's a reason for it. Because in our heart, that's where you find all the desires. And within that heart, you will find a point, a dot, that is growing. And that is called, basically, Nekuda Shehalev, which is a, the point in the heart. That's the fetus of our spiritual self that we need to grow and nourish and nourish and nourish until it is born and as a new person and uh, and and that's why every holiday is important because we are at this moment putting that seed in our heart and making that seed grow that point in the heart is going to be that um fetus that we need to nourish as a, as a mother you know does the, to her babies uh, uh, so very important uh, to understand that Pesach is not only a tradition it's not only a traditional uh, meal it's also a time in which we are creating a vessel in order to receive that light of redemption it is a time in which we are planting the seed in our hearts, the seed of real altruistic spiritual desires in it. And like I mentioned before, if you uh, have seen this video until the very end, congratulations. But if you want to see it again, and uh, in order for you to catch some of these concepts, because it's a lot to, to uh, a lot was covered in, in such a little time, Make sure you have your own personal Agatha right in it, everything. And in that way, you know, you can use it, you know, and, and, and meditate as you are doing the Passover. And uh, if you had the chance to make your own personal Agatha, I made, like I mentioned before, this is our house, our own family Agatha we created. We took uh, different ideas from different Agadot and we put it together into Agadot that is represents who we are as a family and represents also some of our personal and uh, also uh, or Agadot also is spiritual but also talks about uh, the, the, the good things that we have as human and also it promotes activism for human rights in it. You want to instill that in your kids as well. So that's why the Agada is uh, it's in that way. Now, this is all I have 
uh, for this lesson. If you have any question, feel free to send me any um, question through receivingtheoperlight.com and in there you have the contact tab. Click in there and you can send me any questions and I'll be glad to answer that. Until then, I'll see you uh, in the next lesson and also every week in our uh, Torah lesson for the Parsha. So, next year in Jerusalem, Leshana Haba Be Yerushalayim, and Happy and Kosher Feast of Passover, Hach Pesach Kasher Vesameach.